So people have been asking me for my thoughts regarding the recent cease and desist filed on June 5th by Take-Two Interactive to the developers of the popular modding tool Open4 uh, for GTA 5, which is a utility program relied upon by thousands of mods uh, for Grand Theft Auto 5 and is essentially a backbone for the entire single player modding scene. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying that I'm a huge fan of the GTA 5 modding community and the only reason I purchased the game on Steam, having already owned it on the PS3, was due to the incredible modding community that the game has or should I say had. Now there is an argument to be made that Open4 operated under fair use and was made using legal reverse engineering, uh, but fighting the might of Take-Two's lawyers would be expensive, time consuming and mentally exhausting for the developers of Open4, so instead they chose to cave to the demands of Take-Two and shut down the mod. People are naturally concerned and are asking me for my opinion on this matter because Take-Two Interactive recently acquired Kerbal Space Program, a game which in my opinion is far, far more dependent and intrinsically woven into the modding scene than GTA 5 ever was, and people are therefore understandably worried that Take-Two might try and pull a similar stunt with KSP. My short response would be a no, they probably won't. To properly explain exactly why I think this, we have to look at the logical move behind the you know cease and desist against Open 4. Now let me be clear, I think this move was stupid, closed-minded, and infinitely short-sighted of Take-Two, and is yet another example of the sadly increasingly large number of moves that publishers have made to demonstrate that they're completely out of touch with the games their studios produce, and the consumers and fans that purchase them. In their poorly written and grammatically questionable letter to the creators of Open4, they claim that the tool allows third parties to defeat security features in GTA and modify the software in violation of Take-Two's rights. And herein lies the problem with that logic. Open4 is and always has been a tool designed to modify the single player portion only of GTA 5. In fact, the developers went out of their way to ensure it could not be used as a hacking tool or script platform to, you know, maliciously modify aspects of the online components of the game to grant players items or abilities that they should not be able to have. And yet Take-Two decided that they needed to be outlawed anyway. <laughs> Now, I'm all in favour of banning multiplayer mods that put certain players at an unfair advantage over others. You know, I think that's... no one should be in support of that. But single player is a different matter. Modding single player not only has no impact on any other player other than the one using the mod, but mods can and do expand the breadth and scope of a game and increase the longevity and enjoyment derived from playing it. Just last week it was rather infamously revealed that they felt they weren't making enough money out of the GTA Online microtransactions and actively looked down upon so-called freeloaders who didn't buy into any of the microtransaction nonsense. I think there's a fairly good argument to be made that Take-Two just wants people to move away from single player GTA to play in the online mode. and removing mods is a method that they believe will provoke and or catalyze this shift. They've already added a bunch of updates such as new vehicles and features like uh, Benny's original motorworks, which are exclusive to the online mode for seemingly no reason other than to force players to move to the GTA online portion of the game, where Take-Two can squeeze all that extra cash out of them in the form of shark cards. But that's what I'm trying to get at here. All of this boils down to there being financial motivation for Take-Two to force people over to GTA Online so that they can shove microtransaction trash down your throats. I think in the long run it will have a negative effect on the player base, but however misguided, anti-consumer, and just wrong it was, you can see the twisted motivation behind this move. Take-Two wants people to play GTA Online, and there is no online mode in Kerbal Space Program, and unlike GTA, there is no competitive aspect between players. At least not to anywhere near the same extent. Additionally, the KSP player base is dwarfed by the GTA player base, and the game, as mentioned, is completely different from Grand Theft Auto. It's also worthy of mention that this is the first time that Take-Two has pulled this sort of stunt. In fact, in the past they've been pretty accepting of modders, a shining example being of how the creators of the Long War mod for XCOM were actually hired by this studio to create a more fully realised expansion to the game endorsed by the developers and by proxy Take-Two themselves. While Rockstar has been Fairly supportive of mods for the most part, GTA 5 has always been pretty closed when it comes to modifications, hence the need for programs like Open4 to unlock the files necessary to install texture replacements and other modifications. I mean, it's easy enough, but it's certainly not as easy as uh, installing a KSP mod, which is just a case of dragging and dropping things into the game data folder. And in fact, just sticking with Kerbal Space Program now, prior to the existence of Curse, Squad themselves were the ones hosting community mods, and the more prolific creators, such as Porkjet, were ultimately hired to work on first-party assets of the game. As much as we can all dream, the fact remains that there is simply no way for a multiplayer mode to be realistically implemented into KSP, at least to the extent of GTA's multiplayer. 
It's reasonable to assert that the cease and desist against Open 4 is purely related to forcing players to GTA Online, and since this driving force does not and likely will never exist in Kerbal Space Program, motivation to revoke mods just seems a bit non-existent. That being said, obviously I can't categorically say it will never happen because of two reasons. The first is that, time and time again unfortunately, video game executives are out of touch control freaks who just want gamers to play their games exactly how they want them to, and don't want to grant players the ability to, god forbid, improve or fix the game as they see fit. The second reason is the potential for DLC in Kerbal Space Program. The Making History expansion is right on the horizon with a release date slated for the near future. The problem is that almost all the features contained within the expansion already exist as free to download community mods, which might be seen to negate the need to purchase any first party expansion in the first place. In response, Take-Two might decide to shut down any and all mods that offer features that are already bundled within a given DLC pack so that there's no overlap between content that's available for free and content that the publisher can charge you cash for. I like to remain optimistic, but it's evident that Take-Two doesn't really care that much about how their community perceives them, and, you know, this is something that could happen. I should note that since the acquisition of KSP by Take-Two, the developers have stated that the game will remain mod-friendly and that players shouldn't be afraid, but then... You know, publishers have been known to do U-turns on previous statements, so it's up to you if you can trust them on that. I mean, Rockstar were clearly very supportive of mods, and Take-Two kind of, you know, went over that and outlawed them. Ultimately, what I'd recommend you do if you do have concerns is just to back up your KSP files. The game doesn't have any DRM, so if you just copy the game files now, you'll always have the current version working and fully compatible with mod support, so you can just do that. What I would not recommend you go and do is go to the Steam page and leave a bunch of negative reviews. All this is going to do is drive down the sales of KSP and provide incentive for Take-Two to try and implement ways to get money out of existing players since sales are no longer pulling the numbers required to recoup the cost of buying the IP in the first place. Again, I reiterate, KSP and GTA are just completely different games. I just don't think Take-Two will outlaw modding since it's just such a colossal aspect of the game right now. I would argue KSP modding is just as extensive and widely adopted as Minecraft modding is. I'm not saying GTA 5's modding scene was insignificant by comparison, because it's not, but it's not as woven into the fabric of the game and its community to the level of KSP, and the lack of KSP multiplayer and the lack of a realistic way to implement multiplayer or, you know, actual competitiveness between players gives further reason not to worry too much about KSP mods going the way of Open 4. But if you are, understandably, worried, then just back up your game files so if any future update does damage mod compatibility, you still have the current build fully functional and moddable. So that's my thoughts on Take-Two, really. Um, a lot of people are asking about them, so I thought I'd just lay it out. So I guess in conclusion, I've probably waffled on way too long, I'm not... I like to think that it's not going to happen. It's not going to go the same way that GTA 5 has gone. And I'd like to think that hopefully we might even see Take-Two backing off on this stance, though this all remains to be seen in the future. But I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. Sometimes publishers do bad anti-consumer things. So I guess I would recommend backing up your files just in case, but I'm hoping for the best on this one. <laughs> anyway, this Saturday, I'm building a space station around that asteroid. So it's going to be lit. <laughs> that was cringy, wasn't it?